Welcome back for another episode of Midlife. I hope everyone's break was relaxing and the time with the family was well spent, but we're back into the swing of things with school and homework and anything else the academy can throw at our beautiful faces, so let's begin. Anyways, this episode is about the Army-Navy massacre that took place on December 14th and the traditions inside and outside the hall that make Army Week a week that plebes and upper class look forward to. First, for those that don't know, Army Week stands for the week leading up to the Army-Navy game and gives a certain amount of leeway to the rules and allows for pranking, practical jokes, and some fun activities inside the hall that would normally not be permitted. It's a good way for plebes to get back at the one upper class who may have trained a little too hard but it always allows the upper class to remind the plebes that we still have some tricks up our sleeves too. This year, Army Week was more like Army Days. Before and after the game, mids were taking their final exams. Exams started December 7th and went through December 12th. Then we had a couple days break, and then we resumed our final exams from December 16th to the 18th. But that didn't stop anyone, so the first thing on the list for Army Week was carrier landings. Carrier landings are when the plebes flood the deck with water, soap, shaving cream, and anything slippery. They lay plastic-wrapped foam mattresses on top of the flooded hallway, and they slide with ease. Then it's time for the fun part. Go! While taking all necessary safety precaution, mids run and jump onto the mattresses, one from each side of the hall, and run towards each other. They collide with the foam mattresses to try and knock the other off. Most of the upper class spectate as the plebes have their fun, but a few of the training sergeants decided to have a little fun and challenge a few of the plebes. Of course, since we made a mess, it's now time that we have to clean it up. After everyone has had their chance to ride, the plebes have 10 minutes to make the floor shine. Plebes grab towels, brooms, mops, buckets, and anything to start cleaning. They're pretty efficient at it, and within the 10 minutes, the floor is clean and dry. Moving on to the next event is the painting of the Tecumseh statue. Since it was during finals week, I could only get out there to film the last night they were painting, so it was really dark and I apologize for some of the really bad footage. The theme for this year was camo. The members of 9th Company had the honor of painting the statue. They paint all the sides of the base while giving the top of the statue the camo treatment. This is what the final product looked like. Visitors taking tours of the yard walk by the statue every day so they can view what 9th Company had created, as well as get into the Army-Navy swing of things along with the midshipmen. The next thing is the pep rally in the ballroom. This year the pep rally was held in Tecumseh Court. So how's the exams going, huh? It was a short celebration due to having finals the following day, but it got to it got the point across. It wasn't packed, but both the Don and the Soup still said a few words to get everyone pumped up. Four of them will be hot on their heels for a cold, brisk, but awesome Saturday afternoon. It's going to be cold, but we're going to have to bring the warmth. So woolen socks. Running tights under your pants, double up the layers, overcoats, white scarves, black gloves. We're ready to rock and roll on Saturday. The ball run was the following day at noon. This is an annual tradition where the 13th Company runs a game ball from Annapolis to the stadium where the big game is being held. <laughs> Again, the Don said a few words, then him and the first group of the company ran down Stripling to start the over 100 mile run. Saturday, December 14th was the game. I wasn't able to bring my camera with me and when the snow and freezing rain started falling, I was glad I didn't have it on me. 
It was cold, wet, and maybe a little miserable, but it would have been a lot worse if the score had been flipped around. But with a final score of 34-7 Navy, the day was well worth it. To celebrate the win, the football team participated in the bell ringing ceremony. They rang the bell once for every point the team scored over Army. Then the entire team went in rapid succession to give each member of the team the opportunity to ring the bell. Things were a little strange with the game being in the middle of finals, but it seemed like everyone adjusted to the strained schedule. For me, I know the break helped with being able to study a little extra for my last final a couple days after the game. That's all I have for today. Welcome back to all the midshipmen and get ready for the new semester and the dark ages in front of us. To everyone else, be sure to check out USNA on their Facebook page at the link below and check out any of the previous episodes at this link here. Thanks for watching and come back in two weeks for the next episode of Midlife.